It's time to accelerate. Hi, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Join me as I host conversations with the leading experts in sales, marketing, sales automation, sales process, leadership, management, training, coaching, any resource that I believe to help you accelerate the growth of your sales, your business, and most importantly, you. Hello, and welcome to Accelerate. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to talking to my guest today. Joining me again is Mark Hunter, the sales hunter, author of High Profit Selling, and we're going to talk about his new book today, High Profit Prospecting. Mr. Hunter, welcome back to Accelerate. Hey, thank you for having me on the show today. Looking forward to it. So, gosh, in case somebody didn't hear the first or I don't know, is this the second or third time you've been on? Whatever it is, they didn't hear before. Just a brief introduction of yourself so they can... Sure. Uh, my name is Mark Hunter, and I'm known as the sales hunter. You know, when you got the last name of Hunter, you got to use it, got to run with it. Anyway, what happened was, uh, really, it wasn't, it wasn't planned. I guess it was planned. About 18 years ago, I walked out of corporate America. I said, forget it. I quit. And for the last 18 years, I've been doing nothing but this, speaking, consulting, working with companies all around the U.S. and around the world in really helping them sell at a higher profit. What I like to say is, how do we find ways to close more deals without the discount? Which led me to my first book I wrote, High Profit Selling, which was how to avoid the discount, which kind of led to the second book. But hey, I'll let you do a setup on that one. <laughs> I thought I had already, right. But yeah, so, all right, you've got a new book that's out, High Profit Prospecting. So the first question when I was thinking about you know, our, our talk today was really, it's like, okay, there have probably been 1.2 billion books written about prospecting in the last few years. So why another one? Why? What do you have to say about prospecting that the others haven't? Because I never had a chance to write one until now. No, no, no. You, you, know, the real, you know, the real reason is, is two challenges regarding prospecting. One is if, if I and, – and the analogy I like to use is if I'm Nordstrom's, I can't take a Walmart shopper and turn them into a Nordstrom's customer. One of the biggest problems, one of the biggest reasons why people discount on the close is because they started out with absolutely bad, bad prospects. So one of the things that I talk about in the book, one of the things that I show is, hey, how do we do a better job of qualifying prospects? And here's where I probably deviate from a, from the 1.1 million other books out there. That's your 1.1 billion other yeah. books. About yeah, 1.1 billion books, yes. Yeah is that I say, I want to, I want to qualify you fast. I want to qualify you fast because my objective is not to spend time with you. My, you heard that right. My objective is to not spend time with you because what I want to do is I want to spend more time with fewer prospects. In fact, the, the sales pipeline that I want is not a big fat pipeline. I don't want a big fat pipeline. I want a skinny one. You see what happens is when we have the big fat pipeline, we put a bunch of crap in it, and it becomes nothing more than a storm sewer. Well, it gets fat but because it, it people gets have, fat. The, ex have right. the expectation that it's supposed to right. be fat. Uh, it's supposed to be fat, and i got to keep all this stuff in there. What I want to do is I want to have a very skinny pipeline that people are moving stuff through rapidly. You, you either raise your hand, and I identify you as a lead, or I find you as a lead, but I qualify you. I move you from that suspect to prospect stage, and I move you right through. And what I'm doing is I'm not focusing. In fact, it was, oh, well, I, I, I won't go into the story. Well, I hate, I, I've teased hey, you. I might as well tell the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At this point, you have uh, to tell it. I have to tell the story. I was in London. I was in London recently at a large trade show, sales business trade show. And one of the things I was asked to do was to, to judge a number of the booths. And these were companies who were out there selling sales systems. Hey, how you two can sell more effectively, more efficiently, and make more money with our wonderful system. And as I went around and judged them, these booths had just a couple minutes to pitch me. Every one of them started off sharing what their features were. Let me tell you about our product features. Here's what we've got. Da -da. It's like people. These are the people who are supposedly the experts. They don't even get it right. You see, the big challenge we have in lead generation is it still comes down to this feature thing. And I say that is garbage. What I want to be focused on is what are not the benefits, 
Benefits, I think, are so at last year. It's the outcomes. What are the outcomes? What are the outcomes that you are looking for? Because my goal as a prospector, my goal as a sales prospector is the same definition I have for a sales leader and for a leader. It's to help others see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. Think about that for a moment. I, I want to help you, Andy, see yes. and achieve something that you didn't think was possible. I that, run a, that's I, my goal. I want to run a four-minute mile. I, I, my goal, and, and hey, you know what? Trust me. I'll get you to a four-minute mile. Okay. All right. There we go. You, Good. You give me you give me three million dollars and I'll get you to that four million four four minute mile. Okay, running, not driving. I told you running. Yeah, because okay, what right. I'm going to do is I'm going to charter a large aircraft and I'll put you in, I'll put you in the aircraft and I'll let you run the aisle while we fly a couple miles and then I'll get you a four minute mile. That How's may that? do it. That may do it. Anyway, anyway, that's weak. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I mean, the thing with prospecting though and. You've had this sort of interesting conjunction of words, high profit prospecting, because prospecting is really sort of associated with sort of the lowest common denominator activity that takes place in sales, really a, a marketing activity inside sales. Um, so how do you tie the high profit to that? Is it just through targeting and qualification? I mean, how do you know that this initial qualification that this is somebody that's going to be a prospect that's going to buy full price? Well, th that comes back to, and, and it is, it is Believe me, marketing ties into high high profit prospecting because too many times the message that we're sending out is all about price, low price, low price, low price. That, 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 that's the message we send out. In fact, price doesn't have any role whatsoever in the prospecting process. It really doesn't. Should it? If no, no, I, I, I firmly believe I firmly believe it should not. Now, I want to understand what your value of money is. I, I want to understand that. And I can and I can find that out without revealing to you what my price is. Now, here's why. Because we've all been there. The customer calls up and they go, hey, I just want a fast price quote or, you know, or they send an email. I just want the fast price quote. And, and ask yourself this question. How many times have those fast price quotes ever turned into sales? Very, very rarely, unless you truly are the lowest price provider out there. And, and if you are, you're only going to occupy that, that sweet spot for a very short period of time because somebody else will come along and offer a lower price. What, what I want to do is, is if, if you are so focused on price, I'm going to show you where the door is. I'm going to, I'm going to walk you down the street someplace else. You do not fit into my portfolio because the person who buys on price will never understand value. They just won't. The person who buys on price is going to cry and whine and complain and question and challenge you on everything all the way through the life cycle of the customer. Well, so the question is, though, can you qualify on value without talking about price? Well, yes, you can, because what I want to do is I want to understand what is the value that you are looking for. And it really comes down to, again, what is the outcome that you're looking for? Sure, but the outcome's based on a value. You can't measure the relative value of an outcome unless you know what the investment is, right? Well, yeah. I'll, so so I'll, the, price, the price comes in at some point when you qualify. Well, at least I sure it does. does. Well, sure it does. Sure it does. But when I understand what the value is, for instance, I, I live in suburban America. And, um, you live where? I, I live in suburban America. I live in a suburb. <laughs> no, okay? you, live, you live in the booming metropolis of Omaha. I live, you're right. I live in the booming metropolis of Omaha. But with that comes quite a, quite a large yard. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm not going to mow it. I, I did that for years. In the last 10 years, I don't mow the lawn. I don't even own a lawnmower. I don't want to own a lawnmower. So you bring sheep in and let them graze it out? I, I bring in sheep. And, but, but you know what's funny is, is the, the outfit, the guy that I have mow, mow my lawn, I actually pay him more than he wanted to charge me. He, he he gave me a he gave me a quote at the start of the season. We we, we had to find we had to find a new we had to find a new company this year. And he and and, and I said no, I I want to pay you more. And I said the reason I'm going to pay you more is because I want this to be the best looking lawn in the neighborhood, and I never ever want to have to worry about it. Period. Ever. Because to me the value is I travel. I'm on the road seventy percent of the time. 
I never want to have to ever wonder, is the lawn been mowed? Has it been edged? Does it look good? It's done. You know, and, and the guy kind of looked at me a little bit, a little bit in shock. But you know what? I was I was willing to pay him. I, I And I'm paying him 10 percent more, which really isn't that much. But in the lawn mowing business, that's like, wow, that's like unbelievable. And um, it, it, because the value, the value. Now, what's funny is the guy could easily have charged me more than even he is because the guy I was paying previously, I was paying considerably more to. Which is really kind of ironic if you think about it, because this company that came in and gave me the bid, if he had just asked me a couple of questions, he could easily have taken his price up another 25 or 30 percent. Mm. And I would I would have paid it in a heartbeat. But see, what happened was this guy, oh, I'm a, just a lawn mowing company. I got to go on price. I got to go on price. No, it's not. I don't care. I don't care what you sell. Focus on the outcome. Focus on the outcome. OK. All right. Good. So. Let's talk about some of the, well, one question, I guess, before we get into the next set of questions is, is your book intended primarily for field sales or inside sales? Well, great, great question, because I've had that asked, asked me a lot. It, it is really designed for both. Now you say, okay, okay, what are you trying to do? You're trying to appeal to both markets. Here's what, here's what it appeals to. It does not appeal to the very, very short quick cycle sales. In other very words, transactional, it's just, right. Okay. Very transactional. Does not appeal to that. And it primarily is driven towards the longer sales cycle, B2B. Now, I've got some examples in there that fit from a B2C arena, and I've got some transactional, but the the sweet spot is the longer sales cycle where I've got a complex sale in the B2B arena. And again, what I find is it's amazing the number of people that that handle that strictly from an inside sales position. And I see others that know they handle it from an inside to an outside. So it really does fit fit both, but it's a longer sales cycle. Okay. So you've got a number of best practices in the book, and we're not going to have time to go through all of them, but uh, I thought we'd sort of focus on the best practices for making the initial contact, because I thought that was, you know, let's start at the beginning here. And... So what is the goal of the initial contact with the prospect? And I ask this because, gosh, it seems like it should be incredibly self-evident for sales reps, but it, oftentimes it really isn't. So what, oh, is, what is that goal yeah. of the initial contact? Well, okay, here's the end prize. All I want to do is I want to gain one piece of information out of you that allows, that allows me to have a next conversation with you. If, if, if I only do that, I will consider that a success. Now, what do I mean by that? I want to be able to come at you with sharing with you a piece of information that is of value to you. It's not a product feature. It's something of value to you. I want to be able to ask you two questions to get you to share with me one piece of information that provides me with something that I can follow up with you on. And we get somehow a next step. The next step might be I might be having a conversation with you and I go, great. Hey, I'm going to get some more information on that. And if you don't mind, I'm going to share. I'm going to call you back next Wednesday with that. What time would be best for me to call you on Wednesday? See, because now what I'm doing is I'm not just saying, hey, I'm going to call you back, but we're going to get a time set up. All I want to do is earn the right, the privilege, honor and respect to be able to contact you again. When I do that, I've moved the peanut forward. So what's that one piece of information? Uh, it's whatever they want to share with me. They may share with me a critical need. They might share with me a concern they have. They, they might share with me a threat they're facing. It, it, it doesn't matter. But what I want, I want them to share with me one piece of information that allows me to say, great, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find some more information, and I'm going to follow back up with you. How does next Wednesday look on your calendar? So if you're, if you're a rep and you're listening to this and saying, okay, well, still fairly broad. How do, what's, a, what's an example of a question that secures that piece of information? Sure. We'll say, we'll say that I'm selling, I'm selling software that allows me to automate some of my HR. Okay. H- HR activities. So I'm, I, I may ask you, hey, what, what, what are some of the challenges that you and your company face bringing new, new employees online? 
how, how does that process work? And it, is there a tremendous, you know, my whole objective is to get you talking about the process that you're currently using. And I want you to sit there and say, oh, we have this software system. It really works great. And I, I may sit there and say, great. What is it that you like about it? I, I'm not going to condemn anything that somebody's using right now. But you know what's interesting is, is they're going to sit there and, and they're going to share something. And my whole objective is this. Whatever that person shares with me, I want to ask them a follow-up question. And almost always what's going to happen when you, well, I, I ask you a question, you share, I ask you a follow-up question, you share. What you shared that second time, that's going to be something that I'm going to be able to run with and follow up with you. Now, here's a critical piece that so many people make the mistake on. Let your personality come through on the prospecting call. This is not robo sales agent. This is not script city. This is allowing you to come through in your own personality. Here's what I find. If people feel they're talking to a human being, a normal person like them, they will have a conversation with them. But if they feel it's a robo salesperson, it's click, it's goodbye, gone. Well, the guard is up, the fences are up. You know the guard mean? You're, is up. You're exactly. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, and, and yeah. what's, what's a good follow up question to ask? I mean, I, I know what my favorite follow up question is to get that particular piece of information. That, well, I, I, yeah. So we can, yeah. we can compare. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I might, I might, I might sit there and ask him, says, well, why is it that you think you're having challenges? I love leading with the word why. I love it. And and if I'm letting my personality come through, it's not coming through as a threat. It's not coming through. But I just want to get you talking. My whole objective on a prospect, even on a prospecting call, is I want to be doing the least amount of talking possible. When I do that, and I have found I can do that by just putting a why at the front of any question. Somebody shares with me, somebody shares with me a comment. I'll say, fascinating. Can you give me another example of that? Exactly. That's where I go. So I, what I do is I go to, yeah, that's fascinating. That's interesting. Tell me more about that. Right, right. And you know, and you know what's key about that is what you just said. Tell me more. Three words. Short questions get you long answers. Salespeople are notorious for asking these really long, drawn-out questions. And then the person on the other end, end of the phone is so confused, they just go, huh? They have no clue. That's Short questions. That's because they're, they're reading a script that was written by marketing, and and right. yeah, it's it's not. They haven't personalized it. They haven't yeah. taken that long question and condensed it to the three words yeah. which they they need yeah. to do. All right, yeah. so Sh go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I was just going to say, shall we throw marketing under the bus now, or shall we wait for a while? Oh, we can wait for a while. We can. Okay. Go we can, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. we are, we all friends on that side of the spend. So that's right. That's right. So then you talk about, it's our follow-up to that, you've got three methods to secure that initial contact that are worth going through for people. And the time we have remaining is, is one is a referral, obviously, is important. You want to talk about? Oh, yeah. And you yeah. talk about uh, uh, providing key insights. Yeah. You know what? I, I really like providing key insights, Isma. And here's why. One of the things, when I provide a key insight, I'm automatically separating myself from 95% of all other salespeople out there. Because every other salesperson, hi, I'm with Magic Windows, and I have some great solutions for you. Yada, yada. Oh, shut up. But when I sit there and can provide you with insights relative, relevant to your industry, relevant to what you do, that suddenly has me now being seen as a peer by you. That now has me seen as not as a salesperson, but as a partner with them. And it's amazing. That's what I say, you know, when in a voicemail, in a voicemail, I don't want to sit there and say, hey, I'm Mark Hunter and I'm selling something great. No, I want to sit there and say, hey, I've got some interesting information regarding X. I want to share. Here's, you know, I've got a report on this. Give me a buzz back. I'll be happy to share it with you. Mm -hmm. Insights, insights, insights open more doors. So give an example of an insight. I mean, we have the words used repeatedly in the business. Books written about insight, uh, not quite 1.2 billion, but there's been a number of books about insight selling. So what's a key insight that reps should really focus on being able to 
understand how their how their product you know, provides value to their customers and be able to relate yeah. that to a prospect. Yeah. Well, one of the easiest ways is you simply Google the industry that you are selling into and you look at what's currently going on in the news. Uh, you know, I love sharing trend reports, government reports, you know, some, a number's been really, if I'm selling to the HR community and the HR community deals in one particular metropolitan area, I may sit there and say, hey, just got some updates as to the labor statistics, uh, you, know, you know, on the market. You know, if I if I'm selling in if I'm in the financial arena, I may I may I may share an insight or a thought regarding, hey, what's going on with the economy? And, you know, you know, last quarter, next, next, next quarter, whatever it may be, there may be a big dog company that they compete against that they that they value, you know, that that they respect. They may have just announced their earnings. They may have announced uh, some change or something like that. I'm going to sit there and say, hey, I just saw some really interesting information regarding XYZ. I love sharing that type of information. Okay, perfect. So uh, we're running a little bit short on time today. So why don't you tell people how they can find out more about your book? Yeah, it's High Profit Prospecting, and it is available for, for sale right now on Amazon. And, and here's the whole thing. Here's the whole reason why I think you need to pick it up. And it's High Profit Prospecting, Mark Hunter, The Sales Hunter. You can jump out to my website also if you want, thesaleshunter.com. But here's what it's going to help you do. Right in the first couple of chapters, there is a whole series of questions that, that I, I kind of walk you through, work you through. Because here's the other critical mistake that salespeople make. They have one sales process. Wow, this is the process that works. I love this process. It doesn't work. I have to have a different process for every type of customer group I'm going after. And in the book, right there in the first couple of chapters, it, it breaks it down. And there are variances that you have to come into play that it might be uh, in terms of frequency, mode of communication, methodology, all the various things. But it's going to get you thinking about how you prospect. Because here's one of the whole things. Now, I am not averse to cold calling. Whoa, what did I just say? I'm not averse to cold calling, but I don't believe you ever have to. I, I really don't believe you ever have to. Warm, I, I think it's warm calling. It's warm prospecting. And it is absolutely a kick in the pants. Because again, in the book, I'm going to share with you, how do you come up with some of these critical insights? How, how do you come up with it? You can find these critical insights so quickly to be able to allow you to make that warm call. And that's really what this book is all about. It's going to help you. It's going to help you go from that empty pipeline to a warm all call. the way through to, okay. to that warm call and, and where you've got prospects that you can run with. Perfect. Everybody should want that. So I urge people to go check out this great new book, High Profit Prospecting, by my guest today, Mark Hunter. So thanks for being on the show. Hey, thank you. And Very much. Oh, yeah, our pleasure, yeah. as always. So we'll have you back again. And remember, friends, make it a part of your day every day to deliberately learn something new to help you accelerate your success. An easy way to do that is to make this podcast accelerate a part of your daily routine, whether you listen on your commute, in the gym, or as part of your morning sales meeting. That way you won't miss any of my conversations, including those with my top business experts like my guest today, Mark Hunter, who shared his expertise about how to accelerate the growth of your business. So thanks for joining me. Until next time, this is Andy Paul. Good selling, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like what you heard and want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher.com. For more information about today's guests, visit my website at andypaul.com. <laughs>